All right, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to Open Source Friday. Uh, I am B Dougie. Uh, if you don't know who I am by now, <laughs> you probably this is your first time, which is fine, because I think uh, your first time here watching a stream on GitHub, you should definitely hit the follow button, because uh, we just had a security lab uh, session. Uh, if you didn't see that that sort of um, pair programming they were doing, uh, definitely check out the the, the VOD as well. Uh, but today we're not talking about security. We're talking about Octoprint, and we have a special guest, which is, uh, I was going to call you Fusel, but um, do you do you answer by Fusel? Fusel. Fusel. I answer by Fusel. Fusel. Yeah, I answer by Fusel. Hi. <laughs> yes. It, but well, I also answer by yeah. uh, Gina Heuske, which is usually an absolute mouthful for anyone not uh, not not raised in Germany to speak to say. So I'm absolutely fine with just being called Gina or Fusel. <laughs> okay, so. excellent. Um, actually, what's the uh, the history behind your your GitHub handle? Oh, that was actually like my nickname even before GitHub existed, though it was like, yeah, I, I was sitting there at one night and I needed a new nickname and I was heavily into reading, um, I don't know if you remember the user-friendly webcomic, it had this little thing called the dust puppy, like, and it was made of, of a ball of lint and all that, and the German word for lint is fussel. And then there's also the metasyntactic variable foobar, and that kind of like was put together in my head, and somehow I ended up with that. A lot of people think it has something to do with, I don't know, some kind of uh, SQL a dialect. And in German, it also sounds very much like the word for booze, but uh, I don't drink, so that is definitely also Wait, not a connection the, there. What's the word for booze? Fusel, but with an with a U. <laughs> <laughs> you have to really pay, pay attention for the pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was I was expecting to use this nickname primarily in like more English speaking areas, so most people would not see the the, the connection there. Uh, so I figured, okay, this is going to work fine. But when I'm on on German events or such and introduce myself by my nick, sometimes people look at me funny, and then I always say, no, not like that stuff, with double O, <laughs> <laughs> and always in 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 smaller case. In lowercase. Okay. Yes. That's. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually. I, I personally prefer the uh, the lowercase b as well for my name, and then uh, the yo is always capitalized because I want that to be enunciated that that is the second part of my first name, <laughs> B Dougie Yo. Yo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but excellent. Uh, thanks for the, uh, the 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 lesson on how to say booze in in German, but also uh, introducing us to your your all your names. Uh, but you're here not to tell us about your name. You're here to tell us about yeah. um, this cool project, uh, which is Octoprint. Um, so I guess, do you want to give us a brief history of Octoprint and like where it came from? Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, what is Octoprint? Uh, it already says it there. It's the snappy web interface for your 3D printer. And it is uh, basically like a, a cross of uh, a baby monitor and a remote control for your 3D printer. Uh, I started this project over eight years ago. And back then, when you bought yourself a 3D printer or printed yourself a 3D printer, um, yeah, you still had to tether it to your PC all the time for it to work and do its job and all that. Uh, the the more these days more common approach where you put the files that you want to print on an SD card and insert it into the printer. That was more like the out of uh, more, more like the the the, the uh, how do you say um, the exception than the rule. Yeah. And uh, so I had my printer sitting here in my office, uh, my shiny new one that I bought uh, in late 2012, and it was producing noise and it was producing fumes and was producing this this for hours on end and tying up my PC. And I couldn't game on that. I couldn't work on that in the time. And that was when I decided, OK, I need a solution for this. I just want to. So the Raspberry Pi had come out in this year, uh, which is like a tiny computer this size, costs like 40 bucks or something. Um, and I figured there must be some way that I can just throw something on one of these things and let that take the place of my PC and talk to the printer and stream the job to it and also let me monitor it from, from afar. Yeah. Turns out there wasn't. So I sat down over my Christmas vacation and implemented such a thing just to what, what, scratch my own itch. What year was this? Uh, 2012, 2012, late 2012. Okay. So it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, almost um, 10 years. Yeah. Almost. Yeah, well, I, we just passed the yeah, eight year mark. So I, I'm not sure yet what I will do in, in 2022 then, but <laughs> I will probably find some way to celebrate. But yeah, so I sat down, wrote what I needed to write. Um, and uh, actually built up on, on an existing piece of open source software called Cura, which 
is actually a, a so-called slicer, so something that you use before you actually print something to turn a 3D model into the stuff that the printer can actually print. But it also had uh, um, a machine communication layer inside so that you could directly print from Cura. And Cura was written in Python. I already knew Python, so I figured, hey, I understand this language. I can just maybe use this communication layer and then build something on top. And this is how things happened. So I built something, I uh, quickly had a web interface. Uh, I then also found a way to attach a webcam so that I could actually remotely monitor what was going on on the print bed. And um, then by uh, mid January or, or rather early January when my vacation ended, I was like, okay, that's done. I'm finished, that was a nice run. Now I'm returning to my world in the corporate uh, software development world and figured that was that. And then suddenly all from all across the world, people started messaging me and opening issues on my GitHub uh, repository that I had created for this thing. And were like, hey, awesome, can you make it do that? And I'm having problems with this kind of printer. And maybe can you also implement this and that and whatnot? Yeah, uh, too long, didn't read. Suddenly I had a really, 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 really big open source project on my hands that kept growing and growing and growing. And I reduced my job to 80% to have one week dedicated per week, uh, one day dedicated per week to work on it. And that still wasn't enough. And yeah, at some point said, uh, uh, thankfully some company approached me and said, hey, do you want to do this full time? And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> And uh, so well, in 2014, what, what company was this? Uh, there was a 3D printer company, or okay. rather, it was a it was a you would you could probably call it a technology company, a Spanish co technology company. I think they don't exist anymore. Okay. Um, and uh, they also had 3D printers uh, in their in their portfolio, and uh, were interested in simply just growing that that part. And uh, so I said, yeah, well, sure. <laughs> Perfect. And so they hired me full time and I was just here, continue to be here in my home office working on Octoprint full time. And yeah, then two years later, they ran out of money and I had to find another way to continue funding. And that was when I turned to crowdsource, uh, crowdfunding. So since actually since five years now, for five years now, almost to the day. Um, and uh, yeah, so Octoprint, really big project used by many and with one full-time developer who's actually able to uh, fund her work on it through crowdfunding, which is absolutely amazing and which I never expected would happen. Yeah, that's a, that's amazing. And uh, Santoshi in the chat just mentioned like, wow, that what a, that's a dream for many for you to be able to build this project to get adoption. Uh, it seems like you got the, I guess the it's, it's open source, but like in the business world, product market fit of like you've solved a problem that people wanted um and then super awesome that uh the, the, the spanish company was able to uh employ your efforts uh but then you're able to find i don't know if, if it was like a perfect transition to do crowdsourcing for the or crowdfunding for the project or was it like was it there was was there some friction into being able to move from being paid to then wait for payment to come through through contributors well, the friction that was there was primarily rooted in the fact that this is simply not something that is even remotely considered in the German tax code. Okay. So <laughs> I live in Germany and the fact that I work and give the fruits of my work away for free yeah. and people still give me money for it. That is something that simply does not compute in this country. So um, we are still trying to figure this out. but. We'll get there eventually. How does it work with um, like with VAT? Does, uh, Germany participate in the the VAT? Yeah, that is really complicated. Is it? I, okay. Yeah, I. This is also something that is still in in the process of being figured out. Let's just say that if I had known how much red tape was associated with doing something like this in Germany, I would probably not have done it. Yeah. Uh, but now that I'm doing it, I'm simply holding on for dear life and hoping <laughs> hoping for the best. I also have a really good. Um, uh, the tax consultant uh, behind me. Okay, so, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> this is some, like the first week that I started with this crowdfunding and started to look into it, I just called her up. She's the she's the wife of a former um, fellow student, uh, someone I went to university with, and I was like, I, I think I need a tax consultant. And she was like, yep, we got you. Excellent. Yeah. 
that's uh, yeah was really helpful yeah so uh i'm curious to learn more about octoprint um i don't have a 3d printer myself uh i've almost bought one like every year since they've been out but i'm like uh, <laughs> do i need one more hobby like i've definitely got enough stuff in my garage that um uh, I, I just couldn't really convince the wife that this is something that I should be working on. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you have in store of Octoprint to maybe I conv convince myself that maybe my next birthday, I can sort of uh, write the check and have a 3D printer sent, sent to my house. Totally. If you do so, please uh, give me a call or, or a ping first because there's a lot of crap out there that you yeah. do not want to buy. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay, so we already heard that it is basically a, a cross of a baby monitor and a remote control, yep. which means that uh, maybe you sh you I, I'm just going to show this maybe on on an actual printer. You just have to. Are you gonna share your screen? Okay, share my yeah. screen. So this is Octoprint currently with a dark theme actually, which is a plugin developed from the community. I'll get to that in a bit. But um, basically what you have here is you have a web interface, you can see the temperatures here of the printer. So 3D printers or rather FDM 3D printers, which is the class of 3D printers that Octoprints targets. You can, you can imagine those are basically like a, like, a, um, like a hot glue gun on a 3D gantry. So you can move it in X, Y and you can also move it up and you can also make it squeeze out glue. It's not glue, but molten plastic, but you get the idea. Yeah. And this is how you build up stuff. So somewhere there, there are heating elements. Usually these days you have at least one in the so-called hot end. So the stuff where the, where, where the molten plastic comes out and also the heated bed where you build stuff on because a lot of plastics do not like it when they cool down too fast and then they start to shrink and start to detach. And so you want to keep them a bit warm and cozy from beneath as well. So you can get an overview over the temperatures here. I can also just uh, quickly maybe heat the hot end up to 80 degrees here and um, cent uh, centigrade, I should maybe add for the American crowd here. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you will now see that the printer is actually now heating up the nozzle. It's still a bit far to the right of the graph here, but you can see it there that it's rising. And uh, yeah, you also see the printer's operation. Uh, you see a bunch of stuff that is currently not filled here because no print job is running. In theory, you can also disconnect from it here and connect to some other, th other thing. And you have a bunch of files here that you can just select for printing and go ahead with them, basically. You can also create folders if you need some, uh, need some more structure here. And then uh, you also have this tab where you have a webcam embedded so you can make it move now i just homed it on the xy axis i can quickly move the head over there move the bed over there stuff like this yeah uh, there's also the g-code viewer which currently still needs to load the file that i just selected there you go and uh, that also allows you to go through the files that you want to print layer by layer and verify that they are actually looking like you expect them to look. You can also see what is actually going back and forth between the printer and Octoprint. So sometimes you need this for debugging stuff, but also just for more power user level kind of tasks, for example. And then there's also the time-lapse feature because I figured if there is a webcam and I can take snapshots, why not have it take snapshots every, I don't know, 10 seconds or so, and then build up time-lapses that actually show the object growing from the bed. And this is also where plugins that I already mentioned come in again because um, um, Brad Hockesang, uh, aka former lurker from the community, actually took this feature and turned it into something completely and utterly awesome called Octolabs, which not only takes a picture every 10 seconds or so, but syncs the, the point where the picture is taken with the movement of the head so that you can make it look like the head is always at the same point and the object is just magically appearing out of thin air, or you can make it so that it is it looks like it's just moving in circles and the object is moving out of thin air. So there are some really, really artistic and awesome time lapses that you can create that way. And yeah, so this is the basically the core uh, of Octoprint and, and what it allows out of the box. There's also some settings here uh, that you can uh, that you so, so that you can fine tune some stuff, how the serial connection works and all that. And you can also install 
plugins this way. So we have a huge uh, plugin repository, uh, which I think currently has something like 200 uh, or maybe 240, I am not entirely sure, uh, plugins developed by people from the community, uh, maintained by them, completely separate from Octoprint and uh, yeah, all uh, discoverable in the Octoprint plugin repository. Let me quickly actually check. Oh, 286 plugins. Nice. <laughs> from how many different authors? Oh, I thought I had, oh, 202. So 202 separate plugin authors, which is really awesome. Like there is a, there's a really huge community now that builds stuff like automatic upload of your time-lapse to YouTube or um, controlling the GPIO pins on a Raspberry Pi where you have Octoprint running, stuff like that. So there is really, really nice creativity in this community. And they just, yeah. So my idea there was just, I built a plugin interface into Octoprint that allows to extend it in various ways. So pretty much everything that I could think of is an extension point, so to speak. And the community went with that and ran with it and uh, has since been turning up really, really awesome stuff. Yeah, I, I like that um, that you opened up the uh, the API to have plugins because we had, uh, I know you you know Paulus, um, who is the creator of Home Assistant. That was another thing he had to discover with his community and how to sort of like draw the line between building everything versus enabling or sorry not, not enabling that's probably the wrong word empowering uh contributors exactly. to be able to build their own stuff yeah that is exactly the reason also why i did it because i mean on the one hand i cannot even think of all the cool stuff that you could beat but also i cannot maintain all of it so now i can just tell someone hey i don't think this is something that everyone who runs octoprint would want to also have bundled yes but maybe a, a small, but, power, but 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 yeah, but still significant fraction. So why don't you just build it and publish it on the plugin repository, and then everyone who wants it can just pick it, and everyone who doesn't want it won't have to, yeah, face bugs potentially caused by it or something like that. So yeah, I'm I'm really glad that I put this plugin system in there because it has saved me a ton of grief. I've also used it in the past to uh, when when I had some bug in a release that I could not easily solve with a hotfix because, for example, it influenced the software update mechanism, which I'm currently showing on screen. Um, then I just could roll out a really small plugin that fixed the bug, so people could just install the plugin, and afterwards Octoprint was patched enough so that they could get to a fixed version stuff like that. So this is really powerful. Also, plugins are an absolute godsend uh, with regards to working around problems with the various really weird printers that have sprung up on the market now that um, yeah, do whatever they want, basically, when it comes to protocol interpretation. So you can just write a plugin that rewrites whatever goes through the serial line transparently for Octoprint. So Octoprint thinks it's talking to an actual, normal, behaved printer, and the plugin takes care of all the translation. But so can, can we touch on that real quick, uh, just about the, the, the market for 3D printers? Like, what printers work with, out of the box, work with Octoprint? Like, if I wanted to get started today. Uh, first of all, only FDM printers right now. So there's this other version or this other common class of printers now where you use resin uh, that then gets UV hardened. Uh, those are not supported by Octoprint. But pff, yeah, the majority of printers that are currently sold on the market, the majority of, three, of FDM 3D printers are, I think, probably supported by Octoprint. I cannot say for sure because uh, yeah, it, it all hinges on whether they run a firmware which implements the de facto standard protocol. The, pro the problem with the de facto standard protocol in 3D printing, there's neither a standard nor is there a well-defined protocol, but there is something that pretty much everyone roughly does the same, and this is where Octoprint depends on. Uh, so there are a bunch of standard firmwares, some of uh, which you can also, yeah, pretty much uses aftermarket add-ons to your printers, which might not play nice with Octoprint to begin with. Uh, things like Marlin, Repetitive Firmware, Smoothieware, uh, RepRap Firmware, um, and I'm probably forgetting something now, and I hope someone will not throttle me for that. But uh, so there's a bunch of stuff, and, and 
every single one of those is supported and most of uh, the printers that you can get for example in the hardware store on amazon or so they use one of these okay but i, I guess my my next question too about that the fdm printers are are none of the printer suppliers building interfaces for their printers or is it all you're on your own open up a terminal good luck some of them try to but usually uh, it doesn't let's say end well at least from what i've seen over the past eight years being a bit more present in the in the uh, in the industry um in general they just tell you these days they just tell you to slice whatever you want to print throw it on an sd card and throw the sd card in your printer or throw it on an USB, usb stick and throw that in your printer yeah. and something like remote control also is not really hmm. I mean, there are exceptions, of course, but uh, the majority is still like use an SD card, use, use, use an USB printer. And if you're lucky as a, con as a consumer, you actually also have some USB port where you can get the serial access that you yeah. need for Octoprint. But yeah, depending on the vendor or on the, on the manufacturer, that, that then can be hit or miss. So we've seen a lot of problems with really cheap printers. Um, with Marlin, which were forked off of Marlin, so one of the firmware versions, um, like six years or so with bugs still in there that I actually patched myself in Marlin since then. And yeah, it's it's a bit of a, of a really fragmented landscape that is really tricky to navigate as something like Octoprint, which is, by the way, the class of software that Octoprint is in is called host software. Host software is the thing that you used to con communicate with your printer and yeah this communication with printers is extremely tricky if you want to cover most of the market okay that, that's fascinating because like in my mind like i i, I think that uh, you know as most software or engineer or computer hardware is like if you wait long enough stuff will improve as the sort of people involved in the um, the system and like i'm just kind of baffled that it's it's not a solved problem in the industry so like I, I can't name any 3D printer uh, manufacturers, but like, let's just, just draw out a random one that probably doesn't make 3D printers, like Samsung or something. Like, I would assume they know how to do computers, so and they know how to do software. Why? Yeah, why is it so I, hard? <laughs> so the thing is, with 3D printing, like we or with FDM printing, like we have it these days, it, it's that that all was built from the ground up, like maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure when the patent expired that okay. all of this was based on, but there yeah. was a patent held by, I think, held by I either Stratasys or 3D Systems. I'm not entirely sure which of the two it was, okay. but that basically had the whole FDM manufacturing process patented, which meant only hobbyists could even do that if they wanted in the garage. And when the patent yeah. expired, a lot of people just got a got together with an open source spirit and tried to build these first so-called rep rep machines from the ground up and they just basically put an a, 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 an industry standard file format called g-code which is uh, well established in the cnc uh, world and is actually a nist standard they just use this but turned it from a file format into a more or less specified protocol and so you had a bunch of hobbyists who would, would hack on this stuff during the weekend and usually just make it work so that it supported their workflow. And this is how things happened. And you can imagine that this led to some quite creative solutions and also quite creative um, implementations. So this is how we ended up here. And yeah, uh, there is just not that much pressure for um, for 3D printer vendors now to change that because um, let's say you are Samsung. Samsung is not actually in the field, but uh, this is a good example because I can just use this without <laughs> risking of offending anyone. Yeah. So let's say you're Samsung and you you now want to uh, build a 3D printer and you you have you have an idea about the mechanics already and you have uh, have the 3D gantry and all that and you have the extruder design and the hot end design and all that and you know how to put all of this together maybe for something as low as 200 bucks and now you have the problem that you also need firmware for that so what do you do do you develop this in-house or do you maybe just go on github.com slash marlin firmware slash marlin and download that yeah yep that that makes sense and i didn't i didn't realize the patent issue too as well well not even an issue because i think it's expired at this point 
but I think that could also slow progression too as well. If someone Absolutely. Owned, owned so I, I have to admit when I started on this eight years ago, uh, when I uh, sat down one evening and just figured out, ah, uh, well, this is a serial connection. It is surely going to be specified somewhere. How hard can it be? I'll just whip up a web interface and be done with it. I did not expect what I would find. Namely, that there is no standard, there, there was nothing but a wiki page that I could actually read, and this only defines the commands that you can send, and it doesn't define what you get back. Yeah. And things like this. So this turned out to be actually the biggest challenge of developing Octoprint. Like, with all, all of the other challenges that I had to face over the years, including the funding situation, by the way, yeah. the, the protocol madness is, like, I think one of the things that is most to blame for me now having gray hair. Um, <laughs> well, that in genetics, but yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's really insane. And frankly, some days I'm surprised anything works at all. Yeah. Wow. And so I, real quick, uh, I wanted to, I want to get back to your, your demo and maybe we see a hello world. Um, but I want to understand more of your background too, because you, your approach to the problem, I'm, I'm assuming you had experience in the hardware programming side. Uh, to being able to solve this problem with the uh, Octoprint? Uh, not hardware, no. I'm, no? An, okay. uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I mean, yeah, only on a hobbyist level myself. Okay. So I, I did a bit, a bit of Arduino coding and all that in my day. But um, primarily, I uh, am, I was actually a, a, a Java enterprise developer. Okay. So, yeah, I used to be a software architect in a huge corporation and ran around in a suit and all that most of the day, uh, consulting people on how to not do something that they were set on doing because it would fail and them not listening to me and all that. And Octoprint happened because I, I found myself in this job and really wanting to just code on something fun for a change again. Also, you have a visitor. <laughs> yes. I, I mistakenly <laughs> forgot to unplug the Nintendo Switch, so we didn't have uh, a, guest, a guest come in. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, and, and this is my background, so I... Uh, when if you if you ever find you find the itch to 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 just hack around in octoprint maybe maybe look around into the code and all that i've done my best over the past 8 years to make the hints that i used to be a java developer vanish but sometimes you still see variable names in camel case for example which are leftovers of that okay <laughs> Excellent. And you also mentioned that you were um, a programmer in a suit. Uh, have you seen the meme on Twitter at the moment about not trusting a programmer in a, in a suit? I haven't. It's a, it's not a great meme, but it's a, it's a funny, okay. the responses to it, it, it's a funny thread because uh, folks are basically ripping it to shreds. But we can move on from that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I personally, I prefer a hoodie, so... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, uh, and I don't know what uh, Anakin's talking about with the um, with the the mouse, uh, but actually, let's switch to your screen and we can do a quick demo, and I can address my my guest. Uh, yeah, so uh, where was I? Right, plugin manager we already did cover. Uh, I also said uh, something about software update mechanisms. So Octoprint is able to uh, just update itself. Uh, it, and it actually is using GitHub releases for that. Um, and okay. it also can do that with plugins. So your, your plugin can wire a plugin hook, register itself with this software update mechanism. And also, like Octoprint, can provide release channels and all that. So there is like a lot of uh, possibility here to keep your stuff updated and make sure that people actually get notified of new releases and all that. And as far as I know, this is also quite uh, enjoyed by the plugin authors and also the user base. So is, is this yeah. all Python? All the plugins created are also Python as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, everything excellent. is Python. I mean, the front end is is obviously HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and I must. Um, Add here that it is eight-year-old front-end technology because the downside of having a plug-in system means that I cannot just easily swap out a whole technology stack anymore without breaking everything left yeah. and right. So uh, this is also the reason why Octoprint took, uh, is still also compatible to Python 2. Uh, I don't know if you know about the whole situation with Python 2 versus 3, but uh, basically, when Python switched from version 2 to 3, they also did a lot of backwards incompatible changes to the language, which 
were good and were needed, but they still broke a lot of stuff for Python 2 code. So it was a bit of a nightmare to port a Python 2 code base over to Python 3. Python 2 was declared end of life at the first January 1st, 2020 already. Yep. So it predates Corona. And, um, uh, but of course you cannot just with with a pro with a project that has a user base like Octoprint, you cannot just say, okay, uh, I'm I'm now stopping to support Python 2 as well because it is no longer supported because that would break it on everyone's machines out there and uh, it would also cause a lot of mayhem with plugins because a lot of plugins were also be developed by people doing their first stuff ever. They didn't know about Python 2 versus 3, so they just targeted Python 2 and. Now the plugin was only Python 2. So yeah, we've had a lot of fun last year, slowly getting people to migrate. Yeah, <laughs> but is, is there still some plugins that are still left out in the, uh, in the lurk, actually, I guess? Actually, actually, yes. So we, 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 even, we even tracked this now here on the plugin repository. So we have 286 plugins right now, and 238 of these are already Python 3 compatible. Okay, excellent. So 54, a bit, a bit under 50 are still yeah, not, and those are probably can probably cons be considered abandoned by now, but uh, yeah. So we saw this number, this these eighty three percent of the course of twenty twenty, with a lot of advertising for Python three compatibility, and also someone writing an update script to move existing Octoprint uh, installations over without any downtime and all that. Uh, we saw that move from something like maybe twenty five percent, I think, to this number. And this, that was absolutely ex amazing and exciting to see how the community really got together and did this. Yeah, so we also have some stats by now, like user stats. And so you can also now see the top 10 of the month. So which plugins are the most popular among the user base and also which are currently being installed, like there is no tomorrow. That is also really nice. Yeah. And uh, so what else is there to see? Um, yeah, a ton of settings that I will probably or should probably not go into yet, but you can pretty much uh, uh, customize every aspect of your print jobs here and uh, how they are started, how they are stopped, what happens when they need to get canceled, stuff like this. And uh, you can configure the webcam stuff and you can add users and uh, application keys for third party clients, which there are a number by now. Also, there's a bunch of uh, um, uh, native apps now for Android and uh, iPhone, as far as I know, there is uh, someone even set up something that's called OctoFarm, which is like uh, a, a service which you can install on your on your on your own network, for example, which you then can wire up a ton of Octoprint instances. So if you have one more, more than one printer and each of one is connected to an Octoprint instance, you can just have these all connected to your OctoFarm and uh, use that to manage them and also to make sure that everything is all right and make sure all of them are actually utilized all the time and such. So there is some some really awesome creativity going on there. Yeah, I'm curious what would um uh what would sort of be the use case for building a plugin? Because uh, you mentioned a couple of them passing, but maybe if folks are interested, actually one question I have for the chat: How many of y'all are actually using 3D printers? And if yes, uh, are you using Octoprint? Uh, do you have any use cases that you're using it with? But I guess going back to your question, Gina, um, yeah. what are the use cases for plugins? Like what would be the reason to, to reach for that, that system? Yeah, for example, a lot of people are interested in getting a notification when their print, print is finished to their messenger system of choice. Okay. So this is something that you can do with a plugin. For example, there are plugins for Slack, for Discord, for Telegram, for a bunch of other uh, things. Then I already mentioned that a lot of printers that you have out there are not necessarily well behaved when it comes to the protocol implementation. This is also something that you can solve with a plugin. Okay. Uh, you might want to make more fancy, um, more fancy time lapses, as I already mentioned. There's also now some. Uh, actually, also by Brad Hockesang, I just remembered. There's also an, an alternative. Um, so something that. Huh. Let me let me roll back a bit. So yeah. if you if you if you want to um, print something, yeah. So you have you have a three D model file that you downloaded somewhere, or you designed it yourself, and now you want to print it. So first you have to throw it in this thing called a slicer that I already mentioned, which will slice it up into its layers and also make sure that all the layers are painted basically yeah. by the 
thing. And uh, the thing with 3D printers is that most of them so far only supported straight lines. So if you have something like a round hull of something, for example, if you print uh, a boat or, or, or if you printed something like this mouse with the end here, which is a bit rounded or so, then it would not actually print a curve there, but approximate this with very short lines. And each of these short lines is a line, an actual line and a, a command that has to be transmitted to the printer over a serial line and then acknowledged. So this means that this directly limits how fast you can print this because it limits how fast you can send the stuff that needs to be printed to the printer. And now Brad sat down and said, well, I can probably just fit all these line segments with a curve again because some firmware actually allows you to send just a curve command and he did that. It's called Arc Welder and it reduces the file size of G-code files by I don't know how many percent, uh, percents, but it's really significant what he has achieved there and it has uh, made it so much, yeah, so the, the perform has improved the performance of printing stuff with a lot, with lots of curves on supported printers by, by so much through this because, yeah, you no longer have to send two million little line segments, but just one curve and are done and yeah so optimizations like that <laughs> then there are also plugins that give you cloud access to octoprint so octoprint by default is uh, is meant to be run on your local isolated network you should not expose it to the public internet even though some people do it why there are heaters on there you should not expose something with heating elements that are capable of starting a fire to the public internet i do my best to secure <laughs> stuff but I'm a human, I can make mistakes, so please do not expose Octoprint to the public internet. Use a VPN or use a cloud service for that. Yeah. So this is something that people use as well. And uh, yeah, a lot of people are also using plugins to get really creative with regards to some hardware that they interface. So there are uh, people who write, for example, uh, uh, plugins that um, yeah, control uh, LED stripes. Uh, uh, with with individually addressable um, with individually addressable uh, uh, LED uh, pixels, so to speak, to to plot the progress and to turn red when something failed or to, to turn green when it's completed and all that, uh, or a beeper or they wire up a keyboard or something. So there is a bunch of stuff that you can do. Yeah, um, this yeah. is a, a video of my uh, <clears throat> my manager actually building a. 3D printed pumpkin with the Octocat embedded. Ah, yeah. And uh, he's got a um, a nice LED light and an HDMI plug, uh, HDMI plug as well. Um, so if anybody's interested, it is open sourced. And uh, honestly, have no idea of how what sort of services he used, but I know he's very familiar with the Octoprint as well. Uh, as far as I know, he used Octoprint for that. <laughs> He didn't Excellent. use Octolapse from the looks of it, though, because it was like the this, this looked more like the time lapse that Octoprint itself would produce. So yeah. not the magic one from Octolabs, but yeah, so there's a lot of amazing stuff that people build. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, some good stuff. And like it, I, I'm tempted to get a 3D printer to build some of the stuff like that, but I've got so many software projects that I've been working on that I have to finish. Yeah, I know the problem. <laughs> I mean, I got a printer back then as a hobby and then it turned yeah. into my job. So yeah. Yeah, that is the... But you could also get a laser cutter. There is also a laser cutter that runs Octoprint behind oh, me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, nice. really. From a from a Munich startup, and they adjusted Octoprint so that it would drive their their laser cutter. So yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Cause um, so like there is a laser cutter that um, that uh, actually my wife has, uh, which is the Cricut machine, which most people might be familiar with, maybe if you are on Pinterest or anything like that. Um, but that software is awful, <laughs> and they charge you out like out the nose for using it monthly. Um, which is a great way for them to make money, but it's very annoying um, because like we're not laser cutting stuff like every every week. We're doing it like once every three months. So what I'm getting at is like I'm I'm actually intrigued now about the laser cutter. <laughs> yeah, I mean you probably can just swap the electronics if push comes to shove. And I mean a laser cutter is pretty much people who do laser cutters will probably now want to want to hurt me for that but a laser cutter and a, and a 3d printer are in principle they are both just cnc machines they have yeah. 
X and Y, they also have Z maybe. And in the case of the laser, you control the intensity of the beam. And in the case of the, of the, of the 3D printer, you control how much material is extruded at what temperature, and that's that. So yeah. they are very familiar. You, they, you can probably use G-code to control both of them. And that also means that you can do some fun stuff uh, with tools like Octoprint, not not out of the box because, yeah, it needs modification. The modification yeah. that they did is like specific to this one. But uh, yeah, with open source, there's a lot of possibilities as always. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, it's, just, it's a very tempting. It's like having the superpower, but needing to keep it constrained because of, of time constraints. Uh, I like seeing my family and my, apparently my family likes coming in when the, the camera's live too as well. So they like seeing me as well. Um, Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I, I, I know the problem. I mean, you, you might see that I have, a, I have an oscilloscope there. I have, a, I have a power supply there. I have soldering iron. But I really use this all too, all too, all too rarely because of all the other stuff that uh, I already do. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a problem of too, too much awesome stuff to play with and too little time, as always, in our lives, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And... Uh... Uh, speaking of which, uh, I asked folks who uh, are in the chat if they are using 3D printers, and it sounds like Anakin just got a 3D printer and is getting OctoKit running as we speak. Uh, or actually, OctoPrint. Just started OctoKit get... was something else. Yes, OctoKit is completely different. <laughs> OctoPrint um, is what he's getting running um, actually just recently, as well as Santoshi, who's been in the chat answering questions, uh, also um, loves the community and loves the plugins as well. Yeah, I'm also really happy with the community, I got to say. Like... All in all, they are an, an utterly awesome bunch, and it also surprises me all the time what, what, yeah, what what stuff they come up with. So we have, I, I about two years ago or so, I created a community forum, uh, because before that it was all spread across various groups and discussion boards and whatnot, and I wanted one central hub where people could go and meet people like them and using the same stuff like them and all that. And we also have a showcase category in there where people can just show not only what they built with Octoprint, so if they built some awesome plugins or some awesome automations or something, for example, you can also integrate Octoprint right into Home Assistant. So uh, you have a connection to Paulus there as well. Um, yeah. uh, but uh, the, also what they printed with Octoprint, for example, and there are some amazing things there from, from, from uh, keyboards to, uh, to, to some display units for home automation systems and all that, all just with printed cases. And with I, I also remember something with for beekeeping, but I can't remember the details right now. So... Yeah, it's absolutely amazing what people get get up to uh, in yeah. their spare time. Like, it, yeah, Octoscreen is also accessible. There are a bunch of people now who write. Uh, there's Octoscreen, there's Octodash, there's also something else that I forgot the name right now. I'm awfully sorry to the author. Um, my head is just too full with names all the time. And... Uh, those are like when you want to put a small screen right next to your printer, but with which you can control Octoprint directly. And yeah, yeah that's there's a ton of stuff there. Yeah, that that use case of um, like fix like small part printing to fix like one of the things. Like I actually have a keycap on my keyboard that's missing. I know I could probably buy a keycap uh, and replace it, but also folks who are printing keycaps and uh, to replace on their the keyboard if you want to have like a nice cool. Um, design or something Absolutely, for your brand. Yeah. I know people have been commenting on my pizza slice behind me, but I wouldn't mind printing some uh, some pizza slices on my for my keycaps. I mean, I printed the 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 uh, the case for my num block here, which I also built myself. Oh, nice. So not entirely myself. This was an, an open source design, and I had the PCBs made and all that. And then, but yeah, in the end, I just put it into the printed enclosure because. I have a printer, so why not? <laughs> how, how, how about the, um, the um, what do you call the stuff that you put in the printer? It's not... You're filament. Not using filament, yes, that's what I was trying to... Because it's not resin, it's uh, filament. Yeah, it's filament. So wh how about the, the cost around filament? Is that easy to come by? Yeah, absolutely. So when I started out, this was still a nightmare because I had to actually order it in the Netherlands because I could not get my, get any my hands on it in in in, uh, in Germany and all that. But by now, you can just get this stuff off Amazon uh, or eBay or such. And uh, I, yeah, the usual price point these days is something like 
uh, I'm going to say euros now, but you can probably just translate it 101 into US dollars, which is like 20, uh, 20, Euro, uh, 20 euros maybe for a kilogram of this stuff, which lasts you a long time. Like, let me maybe quickly, I'll be right back. Uh, so this is a bit more expensive stuff, but um, this is like the size that you get when you buy a, a one kilogram spool and this really holds a while and this is like 175 uh 1.75 millimeter diameter these days when i started it was all still double the size basically um and really 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 trivial to come by okay. there are also people who print with trimmer line from the hardware store by the way oh what's a yeah, trimmer line Trimmer line that that is the stuff that you use when you have a how do you say when you when you have to when ha a weed whacker when you have a oh, weed whacker oh gotcha yes and they the stuff that you put on there is actually just nylon filament pretty much and when um, when all this stuff started like ten years or more ago people that there was no filament so yeah. it started with with uh, with uh, with trimmer line. Then usual filament came, and about I'm, I'm maybe a month or so ago, there was like an uproar in the 3D printing community. Someone tried to print with trimmer line, and it worked. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know. This is how it started. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all coming back. We are we are already in the retro phase, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. But yeah, uh, do what you got to do as well to to solve a problem. And if uh, this trimmer line is what's available for a couple bucks at the hardware store, like so be it there we go hey you probably can already buy filament at most hardware stores so uh because you also can buy printers at a lot of hardware stores these days and i just saw in this in in the chat that jacob asks uh prints only come out to a few dollars for smaller prints and yep that's it so prints are really expensive what can what can really add up is the number of prints that you do for example if you're prototyping a design uh, and it takes a long while to get it right then yeah but it's not like you're losing hundreds of dollars or something. It's more like suddenly yeah. it's not lo no longer just two dollars, but now it's ten. So yeah, but yeah. that's the, the the beauty of if there's already a solved problem or the showcases or the examples. Um, this sounds like there's a community. So if you are looking for keycaps or to build up your number block, um, it's a solved problem. So perhaps those are open source and you could just leverage those those um, blueprints. I guess do you call them blueprints uh, for uh, the. Models. Models. models okay or, yes. or just stl because that's the file extension uh, okay. and people just say like do you have an stl or something github actually shows stls in the repository browser yes that is uh something that was actually a tip on our recent change log um which uh, i don't know if folks are, are familiar if you're here and you have not been following our our actual youtube account and uh <laughs> i mentioned this wasn't going to be a, a github um uh showcase but let me see if I can find a STL. Uh, if you if you switch to my screen, I have one. Okay. It just needs to load, which I hope it will do now. It isn't that big, actually. Hmm. Hello. It's only when you're looking at it. That's. <laughs> yeah, apparently that maybe we should look back, look away again. Yeah, okay, maybe I did let have me, this let me... Um, example. There we go. Okay, for you it loads perfect. Yeah, right now mine mine is is not liking it right now, but okay. But you can see STL files directly in line. We made a lot of changes to um, how GitHub interacts with different files. So one thing that we didn't have up until this year was being able to embed videos. Uh, I'm not sure when SDLs became a thing, but um... oh, it's it's been some years actually. I think at least five or so because I rem okay. or because I remember it was. L I, I, yeah, it was definitely not yet long that I was working on Octoprint full time when this made the rounds and was like, oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So this is uh, powered with the, I could download the STL file. So if you wanted a, yeah. an example to print, um, you could actually print your 3D model of Skyline, um, which uh, this is basically my contribution graph. So you could see where I was getting ready for some demos towards the end of the year. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. <laughs> it's like a, just a, a square block of this nonstop coding. Um, but yeah, this is my 2020 contribution graph, and uh, we've just made it into something that you could print uh, for fun, because why not? But I'll drop that in the chat for folks. Oh, perfect. You've got yours on the ready yeah. too as well. 
my 2020 with my with my three week gap where I took a vacation, which was really needed. So I'm proud of, of the gaps. You are proud of the blocks. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. we are all proud of something. In 2018, I have a, a three month gap because that's when my youngest was, was born. Uh, yeah, absolutely understandable. Excellent. Um, so we're r rounding up towards the end. I wanted to say, uh, save some time to talk about GitHub stars, but uh, did you want to, um, yeah, do you have anything else you wanted to share before we round up the con conversation? Mm, only that if you use Octoprint and aren't yet, then maybe you want to become a member on the community forums because there's a lot of tips there. There's a lot of awesome stuff to see there. And we also have a Discord server that I would like to point you to because same thing as the forum, just like instant <laughs> yeah which is uh I, I love that discord is really sort of embracing the open source community uh, i did approach the uh the obs discord it was like forty one thousand people in it um, oh, gee. which was it was intense it's a very um fast moving fast pace it's like being on, li on live on uh, a very popular streamer which i saw ninja this went live so if you want to see what a chat looks like that you can't read uh that, that's what that discord looked like um Scarce I can Moose relate. has a question. So feel free to ask your question, Scarce Moose, uh, uh, if it's about Octoprint. <laughs> that, that is a tricky question um, because the thing is, it always depends on what you want, right? I mean, uh, if Ultimaker is more like, I would call, at this point, I would more like call them a prosumer brand rather than a consumer brand because this is like the... Uh, more like the, the, the audience also that they have chosen for themselves. No name is really hit and miss. So in general, when you want to buy a printer, the first thing that I want, would do if I were you was I would first of all figure out what I want to use it for because what printer recommend entirely basic, yeah, pretty much entirely depends on what you actually want to use it for. Yeah. An FDM printer, for example, if you want to print miniatures, an FDM printer would be the entirely wrong choice because it, the resolution is just not fine enough for something like your Dungeon and Dragons miniatures or Warhammer figurines or something like that. Um, so stuff like this is first of all most important and then you need to figure out what op uh, options you have for that and then I would definitely recommend to go on social, to go on Reddit, to go on forums and seek out people who have this thing and what they have to say about it. Because I hinted at it, there is a lot of bad stuff out there that yeah. does not work as advertised. And especially the really cheap stuff is something that you do not want to necessarily uh, get up with. I mean, there are printers that are really, really cheap, but they are also so inherently insecure that they regularly per, uh, burn people's uh, uh, homes down. And this is not a joke, sadly. So yeah. um, there have been cases, there have been pictures that I have seen. And uh, yeah, so be careful. Um, as far as I understood, you can print with two types of filaments on the Ultimaker that will dissolve, rendering you able to do crazy prints. Yeah, but this is not Ultimaker specific. So uh, you're probably talking about, what was it called again? You no, I have forgotten what it was called, but PVA, it's actually PVA, like the stuff that is in glue. Um, uh, you can also print PVA with other printers. You also have dual nozzle printers or multi-extruder printers other than Ultimaker out there. So really just figure out what you need, what you want, and then do your market research and don't just go for a specific brand. Also, hi, JV Peak. <laughs> yeah, you got some friends in the chat. Apparently. <laughs> Uh, excellent. Um, yeah, that's pretty insightful for folks who d weren't catching on. Um, we were just talking about recommendations for 3D printers. And uh, really, it sounds like if you just jump in the forums, jump in the Reddit, uh, and start talking about what you're looking to build, um, you can probably get some recommendations that way. And uh, yeah, more like fans. <laughs> JVP is uh, a fan. Excellent. So speaking of fan, uh, I wanted to actually take a look at your GitHub stars. It's something that I, I've always I tried to round up a lot of the conversations for Open Source Friday on yeah. stars because I find it's always unique. It's kind of like looking at someone's like, I don't know, you go and you giving like a tour of your house. Uh, we looked at the, some of the code that you you uh, put together to actually make the plugin architecture for for Octoprint. But it's also cool to see what you're interested in. Uh, so you actually have a ton of stars, uh, which sometimes. Some folks don't use stars, which uh, I, I that's fine. But stars are a really cool way for you to save projects for later. So 
give Octoprint a star uh, if you want to check this out. Um, but are anything you want to talk about and why you why you started? Any interesting projects here? Yeah, the, the top three are actually related to all the stuff that I'm currently doing in my spare time. So um, Local Tuya is like a project that I found that partners well with Home Assistant. So I'm also uh, very much into home automation. Uh, most of the stuff here is in some way or the other way connected to my local Home Assistant instance. Nice. And I recently ran into issues with my lights because those are you or otherwise Zigbee based and uh, I am living in a rented apartment surrounded by neighbors who do not care about me trying to run a Zigbee mesh here and have their Wi-Fi channels all over the place. So I'm currently looking into replacing the lights with Wi-Fi bulbs which have come, come really low in price, but most of them are not easily hackable these days anymore, sadly. So a lot of, this, a lot of these that you can... Um, can buy they are they are on the so-called Tuya cloud or smart home or something like that is also another name for it and you have to use that with a dedicated app and it phones home to some chinese server or something this is something that i don't want i want my whole full home completely and, and utterly isolated from anything in the cloud yeah. um and as far as i understood this uh, this repository i still have to look into the details but as far as i understood this this way basically fake this cloud part so i just have to set it up once and then i can have this take care of everything Thing. So this sounds like a nice fallback if I cannot hack the, the, the bulbs that I've got uh, otherwise. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to give that a star myself because I I will be setting up my, my house with Home Assistant um, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, I, I wanted to get the uh, the blue box that is now oh, yeah, sold yeah, yeah, out. The, the, yep. So uh, those are sold out. So I think I'm going to go with the Raspberry Pi route. Uh, so I just got to order, order one of those and get those set up. The, yeah, mine um, actually runs just on my Synology NAS and okay, nice. works fine. Yeah, so there are <laughs> options. Then next SEO, I'm currently working on a relaunch of my personal um, of my personal uh, homepage, and uh, I, I since I'm also re re evaluating React as a future UI framework for Octoprint, I'm I figured I might as well use something that makes me uh, or allows me to practice react so i okay. went with next.js and just the other day i was trying to figure out how to do all this open graph stuff so that if you want to share a blog post of mine for example you also actually get this n nice little image card and all yeah. that on twitter and facebook yep this is where that came in and i've uh, deployed it on my local development stuff so currently nothing is online yet but uh, yeah i'm getting there it's Something that, uh, yeah, whenever I find some some relaxed minutes these days, I just grab the laptop and work on it. But yeah, it's been taking whole, all, all of March so far. Yeah, uh, what I found is uh, I waited for WandaVision until they got like like six episodes. And that was sort of my, my chill time, try to figure out what the show was about, but also write some code. So that's that's been my life hack is like put on a show that I can watch sort of half watch and half think with code. And uh, mm -hmm. I was able to uh, solve some problems that way. Also find yeah, the I, time. <laughs> I, I, I do that when my partner plays video games because yeah, I enjoy watching those, but sometimes there are downtimes and all that. And then I can yeah. just, yeah, this is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, yeah and Megadesk is, uh, so I, I sit a lot. I sit way <laughs> too lot. Uh, so uh, back in early 2016, I got myself an Ikea standing desk an electrical one yeah so actually i can just now like press here and you see that something here changes yeah. right yeah, we're gonna so... see you go go away <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye uh and uh the problem with the ikea standing desk the bekant desk that i got is that uh it has a control unit but you, it does not have something like presets where you can say yeah. drive up to standing height, drive, uh, drive down to, to sitting height. And this was annoying. So last year I stumbled over this one thanks to the changelog.com podcast or uh, rather the newsletter from them yeah. and ordered that on Tindy and had it lying around here for months now. And last week I finally sat down, dug out the repository again, dug out the documentation and replace the controller unit on my desk. And now it's absolutely awesome because I have these presets. And I also got myself um, I, uh, an, an, uh, a, serial con a serial converter so that I can flash it with new firmware because I hope to maybe be able to modify it a bit more. Awesome, yeah. I, I remember this repo because someone actually tweeted it. Um, 
because they sort of they they made their standing desk work based on their GitHub commits, uh, <laughs> which was like really it was like a really silly trivial um, task to do. But basically, they were able to make their their desk go up and down based on like what they were working on, um, which was clever but also kind of silly <laughs> yeah this is but this is actually something that i want to achieve because i saw that this is also the point where i definitely did start this i saw that they are currently working on getting serial support in this thing so that i can Excellent. also attach something like an esp32 to it and then wire it up to home assistant so i could do stuff like i don't know that thing detects i've had uh, i've i've sit i've set i've set too long or something and then it just drives it up yeah <laughs> or something yeah it, that's it, really it's, nice it would be nice to connect that to your apple watch when it tells you to uh stand up every hour or whatever it is absolutely um, but yeah excellent I, I also i mean my desk also has a twitter account from back when i was experimenting <laughs> with uh, uh with distance measurements and all that through esp8266 modules and back then i had it so that it just measured the gr the distance to ground with an ultra uh, uh, sorry an uh, ultrasound right ultrasound is the, is, is the english word with an ultrasound sensor and then whenever i switched to standing it would tweet out Gina is now standing, and whenever it switched to sitting, it would treat out Gina is now sitting. Yeah. So that was also something that I could reactive the hit then. Yeah, and I like uh, JV Peak's uh, example where you could control Twitch chat to uh, control your desk. So. Oh dear, no, 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 no. <laughs> so as an opt-in, it's like Gina's she's concentrating too much. Let's raise her desk up, um, which would be hilarious, but also very annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wouldn't get yeah. any work done. But yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for uh, I guess <laughs> obliging and going through that uh, that little exercise with me. It's always nice to see what people are working on uh, and seeing what they're starring because usually the stars correlate with like interest. And um, we won't even look at my stars because my stars, well, now we'll include your stars. But uh, I also have tons of side projects, tons of stuff that I'm just like starring for later, and we'll yeah, hopefully get to yeah. it. Yeah. I also recently came across across this bookmark manager called Raindrop IO and just started structuring all the bookmarks that I come across all the time. And it's ridiculous what this collection has grown to in just a bit over two weeks. So yeah. Wow. I have yeah. <laughs> way too much stuff. Yeah, I, I, I always do like a cleanup. Usually around the holidays, uh I'll do a cleanup of all the stuff that I didn't get to and like stuff that actually really I do want to get to, those will get rise to the top of the list. But um unfortunately I still haven't touch that list <laughs> so it's uh too much stuff but uh speaking of what um gina thanks for chatting about uh, octoprint i hope folks um if you have not tried octoprint if you're into 3d printing um definitely join the, the forums join the discord uh connect there find re recommendations for 3d printers and what you're trying to accomplish through the examples uh i think this is uh, an awesome community that you can sort of engage with and if you like what you see and are using Octoprint, then please consider sponsoring my work. <laughs> yes, yes. There's lots of options here. And uh, as you talked about earlier, uh, you got into the, the crowdfunding uh, train pretty early in this, uh, I guess, well, early after the other company decided that they didn't have any more money. But regardless, everybody support the the work of open source, uh, just in general. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll we'll see more and more uh, releases coming from, from Gina and Octoprint. I'll do my best. Excellent. Well, everybody else, uh, if you want to follow me, I'll be streaming. I always do this wrong. I'll be streaming on this channel uh, later today, just doing some general open source stuff. So if you just want to watch me struggle through some Node and JavaScript, uh, I am your guy. Uh, and then also this this video will be on YouTube and probably by Monday. So follow the YouTube channel. And also, uh, Paulus is in the chat. Hello, Paulus. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check out his, uh, his previous stream as well with Home Assistant. And uh, everybody stay saucy.